But when their gambler hits bottom, which is generally the case with addiction, and government is a massive addiction to violence, power, and, and greed, right? So there, there, there does have to be pain, right? People who don't uh, you know, adjust their health to prevent heart attacks will usually do so after they get you know, the, the big one, right? If they survive it, right? So uh, if you don't go to the dentist for preventative, then you'll go when you got a toothache, right? So people will change based on pain, and uh, where you don't change on, based on reason, you end up having to change on pain. And uh, that's why, much though I dislike the difficulties that people are facing, it seems to me, if you're not going to listen to reason, then you'll listen to reason after you see the disasters of not listening to reason. And, and mm -hmm. that's what I think is going to be the spur between people looking to new s solutions, because they know, and it really hits them hard, and the pocketbook is, as you say, is a pretty hard place to hit people, particularly where they don't have a lot of options later in life. Right. They will really start to look for alternatives, but only when they see the suffering. And it's been a long time coming, and the longer it comes, the harder it is, right? So. right. And it was that line from the movie which touches on it, which really sums up what you're saying, what we're saying about the numbers uh, from A Bug's Life, which we mentioned how many times. Those puny little ants outnumber us at least 100 to 1. And if they ever figure it out, there goes our way of life. Yeah, we're done. So we're, they're done. So it's just a matter of keeping people from knowing that stuff. And that's why they keep you so damn busy. That's why yeah. you, you've, you know, it's calculated all right. We're going, you know, everything that's happening now is being done for a reason. There, there, there's an object behind hyperinflation. Okay, and uh, that they have to keep you so busy working for this, that, you got to pay for the flat screen, you got to get the yeah. SUV, you got you got to keep paying for all this stuff, and it keeps you too busy. You know, it's like, well, I'd like to go out and join you guys and help with the activism, but I got to work, I got this. You know, so they keep you busy on purpose. You know, you got two. You know, it used to be that the dad could work without just a high school education. Now you need two parents, and they're still barely making it. I think the government is starting to come around to the idea that the ants are getting smart and organized and so forth. When the when a judge sits down and looks out at 25 people standing there coming to support one guy, they know they're not going to be able to treat him the same way. So in a sense, I think as we see more and more of that, it will come to the point where they're just overwhelmed and what are they going to do? It, all they know is to respond with violence. Or propaganda, and the propaganda is just not working that much anymore. There's just not, you hit, they're hitting the gas and they're not getting much burn, right? I mean, you can see that. The talking heads are making the rounds about the stimulus package, and there was a massive silence, at least from what I could see in terms of the general response to the population. And everyone's just like, you know, we've been panicked too many times to believe it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that is, is really, really fascinating that when people, when a society or a civilization as a whole, and this is larger than America, larger than North America, because the same thing's happening in Europe, they're all out of cash and, and massively indebted. When it is a very dangerous time because it can go either way, right? And history is made by the choices and resolutions and integrity of individuals. History, I'm not a historical movement kind of guy, you know, well, this tide of the class warfare and this and that. It's made by the decisions and the courage of individuals. And um, when people are hungry for a new solution, uh, then they will need to get a very forceful and positive and emphatic argument for a new direction. And you can't do that. Uh, to your point, you can't do that if you're the only guy on the block because you just look weird. You know, like yep. if, you, if you're basically standing on a soapbox on a street with no one around you. But if you've got 100, 200, 500,000, 10,000 people, then you start to look like you've got something. And it's a weird kind of thing, but people but will judge based on the at audience. The tree and how many other people are yeah, they're just come following, right? and look up at the tree? Yep. Oh, there must so, be something up there. The, yeah. I, I found it, when I was uh, the only one who talked about these things in my social group, I found it very hard to be passionate and emphatic because you're staring into the th thousand eyes of skepticism, you know, and people just don't believe you, right? But when you're around people and you're in a community with people where you have that like-minded, you've shared that ideas, you realize you're not alone, even when you're separated from that group, you gain that personal conviction. That's a, I mean, we are herd animals to some degree. It's really hard to forward the truth just on your own. But being part of a community and the internet, of course, is great for that in terms of feedback. I wouldn't do what I could do. You may not. You certainly wouldn't. None of us would be here. Right. So the fact that we have a community, we can exchange these ideas, we can see educated, intelligent women, uh, like the one, woman who gave a presentation on the pharmaceuticals last night, Brilliant, you know, fantastic. You know, mm -hmm. seeing all of that, the mathematics, the statistical analysis, the education, the experience, it gives you the conviction to go out among the skeptics, feeling like, you know, there's like that commercial, uh, we are the network, you know, where this guy's being followed around by 500 people everywhere he goes. Mm -hmm. That's sort of what it feels like when you get more involved in a community, which I think is really important and was so impossible before this new technology came out. Yeah, it's certainly encouraging, and I think it's starting to build on itself, and it happens through events like this at the Free State Project. So. Excellent discussion. I want to wrap up. Uh, what's going on with you? What's new? 
Well, I'm working on finishing the new book, which is going to be a lot more comprehensive than Adventures. Uh, yet? I, no. No. Uh, I can tell you we're about 35% done, but it's going to have an extensive cross-reference to the realm. Uh, it's going to have Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and England, although in England's a, it's a mess. Uh, so you'll, and you'll be able to see examples of how to do paperwork in each part of the realm. Okay. And then they'll be supporting, uh, like I talk about standing in corpus delecti, I'll have all the equivalent cases and whatnot so that people can go in and, and they can write their paperwork and they can go in. The scripts are going to be adjusted for that. Okay. So that's in, and the show starts again on, on March 21st, No Stay Project on the libertynewsradio.com. Okay, great. And Stefan, what's new with you? Still doing the podcast? Uh, I'm doing the podcast a little bit fewer since I became a new dad, right? So that's cut down. Um, but uh, I've started to do more current event stuff, uh, this True News series. It was originally Naked News, but I actually found out that was taken. Yep. Shockingly, <laughs> as was my People outfit. In Russia, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, and I figured that if anybody who wants to see naked news is much more likely to tune into some Russian woman than say me, right? Absolutely, right? <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so uh, I'm uh, my books are all out and for free. I'm working on a new book uh, because I keep getting this question: and how do I achieve? How do I help achieve liberty? How do I help bring this movement forward? Because I'm not into politics. Uh, uh, and I'm not into the legal action. Uh, I'm trying to find, uh, well, I'm trying to disseminate a third way that I have where people can take these kinds of uh, decisions in their life that I think will absolutely uh, build the foundation for a free society. So I'm working on that, should be out in a month or two. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just keep doing the videos, keep doing the podcasts. Five million podcast downloads a year. We just passed one million YouTube views. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of cool. That at freedomainradio.com. Free radio. Radio. That's right. Okay. And Ian, what's new? Well, I, I host Free Talk Live as always, and we're expanding, getting on more stations. So hopefully, as Free Talk Live gets out there, more people, random Joes, will just come across the show and be introduced to the ideas of freedom. That's certainly been the process so far. And then eventually, they'll hear the, uh, you know, if they listen for long enough, they'll hear the ideas of the Free State Project, which is, of course, why we're all here today. Uh, it's the Free State Project's Liberty Forum. And then they'll get the idea into their head to uh, maybe I should come up and join these guys. So, and then specifically, I'm promoting freekeen.com, which is a multi-user blog. Essentially, we have a cadre of voluntarists that have moved into one section of the state. Now, there are some in other parts of, of New Hampshire. There's a, a very specific invitation out there to come to Keene. You know, let's make Keene that shining city on the hill that to, to prove, you know, the proof of concept. Yes, liberty absolutely does work. Here's the proof. And so we've got more voluntarist minded people moving to Keene all the time. And, you know, if the politicos want to come in and do their thing there, too, I think that's great because it'll give the, uh, the, the existing political people in town, the, the establishment, give them something to deal with. Because right now they don't have to deal with anything because the voluntarists aren't involved in that stuff. So there's all kinds of opportunities. It's such a great little place to live. Uh, it's, a, it's like a teeny little city, but it's got all of the amenities that you would need to have you know, to, to live comfortably. And so I think that by gathering as many liberty activists, not just in New Hampshire, but also specifically in, uh, in Keene, we're going to see, and we are seeing some amazing changes begin to happen. Sam recently moved in. Uh, there are more people coming. We've had the activist population, I think, triple within the last six months. So keep your eyes on uh, freeking.com and watch what happens. And if you're having trouble making the transition, he will put you up at his house. Just remember I don't, that. I don't know about that. But there, well, there, he's got a couch. He's got a couch he can stay on. That's right. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Sam.